Let me ask you, do you like rejection? Or I'll ask it another way, can you learn to like rejection? We'll find out in today's episode of The Buyer's Mind. Welcome to The Buyer's Mind, where we take a closer look deep inside your customer's decision-making mechanism to reverse engineer the perfect sales presentation. Now, please welcome your host, Jeff Shore. Greetings, everyone. Once again, welcome to The Buyer's Mind. I am your host, Jeff Shore, the podcast where we really try and get inside the mind of a customer, figure out how they think. And when we know how they think, we can reverse engineer our sales presentation so that we can make it easy for them to do what they want to do anyway. And today we're going to talk about a very, very common issue in sales, the topic of rejection. Joined, as always, by Show producer Paul Murphy, and I'll just ask it to you straight, Murph. How do you do with rejection? I don't do well. Um, you know, I, I always see that as a personal issue that somebody doesn't like me. That is a very common deal. We interpret rejection as being personal. Although I like to teach the concept. I talk about this in my book, Closing 2.0. I like to teach the concept that people reject concepts, not people. In the sales process, they're not rejecting you as a person. They are rejecting that concept. And yet it's very hard for us to do that at times. So one of the things that we can do if we want to get comfortable to rejection is to increase the amount of rejection that we get. That is to literally look for opportunities to increase our rejection and train our brain so that our brains believe, I can handle this. Is that making sense to you, Murph? Kind of, but I, I also wonder, does, does that create a, a negative worldview for, for a salesperson where you now you're looking for the rejection instead of the acceptance? Well, that's a good point. Uh, when we look at that worldview, I think the more important worldview is what does a rejection do? What is a rejection a good thing or a bad thing? See, I think it's okay uh, to recognize you're going to get the rejection as long as you also recognize that it moves you one step closer to the yes. So those rejections are normal. I think it would be foolish for us to believe that we will never get rejections. So I don't go into a call expecting a rejection, but I certainly go into a call knowing that it will happen on a regular basis. I just need to decide how I'm going to respond when I get that rejection. That decision will be up to me. And to get us into that, we got a really interesting interview from someone who decided to do just that. He decided to go for rejections, and I mean a lot of rejections. All right, so uh, joined uh, from upstate New York uh, by Leo Quinn here. And, you know, normally what I like to do at this point is give you a little bio background, be able to go back and, and uh, you know, tell you a little bit about our guest. Uh, this guest was referred to me, and here's what I know. He read a book 11 years ago and finally decided to take action. All right, that's it. I'm going to leave it at that one, and hopefully uh, Leo Quinn can take it from there. Uh, Leo, welcome to The Buyer's Mind. Thank you, Jeff. It's great to be here. All right. Now, you, you can't leave us hanging on that. Uh, I read a book 11 years ago and finally decided to take action. Tell us more. The book is called Go For No, and I know you've had one of the co-authors on your show before, Andrea yeah. Waltz. Mm -hmm. And uh, Go For No is the subtitle is uh, Yes is the Destination, No is How You Get There. Mm -hmm. And as I said, I read that book 11 years ago. I do small business marketing workshops in my area. I talk about that book all the time. I recommend that book all the time. There's a great story in there about an insurance consultant who said to the insurance sales that people just go out and say, you don't want to buy life insurance, do you? To as many people as you can. And it changed their lives. Mm -hmm. But I've never bitten the bullet because of fear to go out there and hear no more often. So I decided that uh, during summer of 2019, I was going to go out there and increase my failure rate. And I was trying to figure out a number. And one a day sounded too easy. A hundred didn't sound big enough. So I decided on summer of a thousand no's. So my goal is to hear no, get my sales pitch rejected 1,000 times this summer. 
So are you disappointed that I said yes then? Because uh, well, yes, I kind yes. of screwed up your pattern. Well, it's funny. If you had given a little more preamble and explained the go for no thing, I would have said, hey, it's I'm disappointed to be here, Jeff. But <laughs> I thought that would be confusing to people. There you uh, go. So. There you go. <laughs> you know, it, it is funny, though. You know, I, uh, yeah, I talk a lot about uh, boldness, which I define as uh, uh, doing the right thing even when you're uncomfortable, right? It, it's, I think, mm-hmm. our, our desire for comfort or what I refer to as our comfort addictions oftentimes enslave us. But sometimes when I'm talking to groups about that, you know, it, it, it might be a keynote speech and there's somebody who's working in the back of the room who is not there to hear the speech, but I'll just randomly just say, excuse me, excuse me you back over there, can I have a hundred dollars? Would you give me a hundred dollars right now? Uh-huh. And of course they say no. And, and right. I try to make the point here. Wow. I mean, I didn't get shot or anything. I'm still breathing. I didn't have an accident. So tell us about your journey then. Tell us about your go to go for no journey. Has it been difficult? Has it been easy? I mean, what does a summer of 1000 no's look like? Well, so far I'm on no number 398. Uh, by the end, by the end of this day, I'll have to have 404. I did the math back in June and I have to average about 12 a day to get to where I want to be by the end of August. And, you know, it was a little nerve wracking at the beginning. My first no came from a local auto body shop. I have a dent in my car and I was trying to find, I'm trying to find an auto body shop that will barter with me. I'll help you with your marketing if you fix my dent. Uh, and I dealt with this guy before and he gave me the quote and I said, he didn't have a website. His company name is available as a domain name. So I said, I could set you up with a website and work on your social media, help you out. And he goes, eh, I'm looking to get out of the business. So that was my first no. Uh, a lot of the no's have come from pizza shops. Now I'm a marketing guy. I can work with any business, but since I am looking to get a thousand no's, I wanted to pick a niche where there's a lot of them. And there are certainly uh, tens of thousands of pizza shops across the country. So most of my no's so far have been from pizza shops and I'll call and ask, If they do text message marketing, if they say yes or no, if they say no, I ask if they'd be interested in giving it a try. And I usually get my no there. Um, So I think I've conquered my fear of the phone. Now it's just getting more in-person no's, which are a little more nerve wracking for most people. So uh, that's where we stand at this point. I've got uh, 600 some odd more to go, and I'm going to try and get more in-person no's. When you look at the idea of, um, you know, conquering fear and, and trying to get out there, uh, it, it, you know, it sounds like some of the questions you're asking, they're like, can I have your business or can we talk about your business? Is that the is, is that all of your no's are related to business or some of them just like, because I think of, you know, a summer of a thousand no's and that sounds like uh, my 21st year um, <laughs> uh, in the dating world, come to think of it. Right. Yeah. Right. Oh, I haven't heard no in the dating world 10 times in my life because I've been. Uh, but anyway, um, but no, I've had some uh, other no's. I I spoke at a local meetup on this subject a couple weeks ago, and I asked the organizer if she would pay me $100 to speak to her group. And she said no. And then during the talk, I asked if she would pay for my lunch and she said no. So there were two no's there. Um, we have a toll road here in New York and I was uh, going through one of the booths last week and the toll was 30 cents and I handed him the ticket and I waited for him to say 30 cents. And then I held up a lottery ticket and I said, can I pay with this lottery ticket? He smiled and said, no, sir. And I paid my 30 cents and gave him the lottery ticket. So I've had a few of those, what I call stunt, stunt nose, but the, the other ones have been related to business. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. I love it. Uh, would you have said going into this uh, a process that um, you were legitimately afraid of nose or, or, or oh, how, how would you have to describe your situation before you read the book and now going into your summer of 1000 nose? Absolutely. Absolutely scared to death. And I'll tell you, I, I'm a lumpy mailer. I've done a lot of lumpy mail in my life. And you're, it's a concept you're probably familiar with, with mm-hmm. from Dan Kennedy and the likes sure. of him. And I've done, I spent thousands of dollars on lumpy mail. I've sent live working cell phones to people, baby bottles, b- bouncing balls, uh, easy buttons. I have an easy button here that I now press when I get a no. That was easy. Um, so I've <laughs> sent things like this in the mail for years. I have never once followed up with a phone call. I followed up with email but I've never once followed up with a phone call. Hey, I'm Leo. I'm the guy that sent you the baby bottle or the cell phone because I did not want to hear. I did not want the rejection. Um, so yes, it's, it's, uh, something that it really, 
is something that affected my business life up until this point. I really wanted to rip the Band-Aid off this summer. And I figured doing a project like this publicly would certainly help. That's one of the reasons I'm talking today. And I reached out to podcasters is I want some sort of accountability. A lot of the people I've talked to want to hear from me at the end of August to hear how it went. So again, that keeps me motivated. You are literally keeping track. You've got a record of your rejections. Yes. If you ask me what number 212 is, I could tell you. What was number 212? I know you're going to ask me that. So I now have to open up. I, I meant to, I apologize. I meant to open up the file before we call. It was a pizza shop somewhere. And I'll yeah. tell you the name right now. Uh, okay. Here's my no tally. And if I page down to number 212. All right, folks. Okay. Here we are. It is from Vermont. Um, Holtney House of Pizza. Why Why not just like, okay, here's a little a chit mark here. That's uh, I can keep track five at a time how many I had. Why, why do you actually go through and write the names down? I think credibility. Um, mm -hmm. You know, yeah, sure, you're getting a thousand no's. I believe you. So I want to have, uh, you know, some sort of proof that I'm actually going through this. Uh, how long did it take once you embraced this to be able to get into the swing? Were the first couple of days uh, exceedingly difficult? I'll tell you, that's a great question. I came up with this idea on May 23rd. I had a meetup on the subject where eight people, eight people came and uh, decided that they were going to try this too. Uh, that was on June 1st. I didn't actually start making phone calls until June 7th. Hmm. And, and that was, you know, 23rd to the 7th, 14 days, two weeks to build mm -hmm. up the courage. And on that day, June 7th, I only made 10 calls mm -hmm. and I got three people on the phone and I got one no. Um, so I had the, the weekend to stew. And then on June 10th, I made 100 phone calls. And I, that was my goal just to make 100 phone calls. Busy signals counted. No answers counted. I just wanted to see what would happen if I made 100 calls. So from those 100 calls, I got 29 no's and uh six yeses or maybes you know we haven't talked about the, the the positive thing aspects of this but i have so far gotten about 30 positive responses which is roughly 30 more than you would have had had you not made any calls at all i'm, I'm just doing the math yeah. I, I could be yeah. off on that but i think my math your, is right your math is exactly right <laughs> <laughs> I, I i love it um how much of this do you think is is just sort of personality based i mean some people are you know they're 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 more driven to try and figure stuff out and uh you 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 sound like a guy who is uh um you know you you you've got some achievement drive to you and you 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 want to be successful how much of this is personality based a lot of it i like to i it's funny i i talk about the meetups i go to before 2016 i'd never been to I hadn't been to five networking events in my life just because I, I prefer being on stage in front of a hundred people versus one-on-one. -on -one. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I think it's very much personality driven. You know, I don't know where this fear of rejection comes from raising a loving family, all that sort of thing. But uh, for some reason, this has been a, a sticking point for me. And I, I like, as I say, I reach out to podcasters. I have this Facebook group just to, hold myself accountable because I know by now I would have quit. Okay. So you got 398. You're closing in on, on 400. Well, yeah. why not quit? I mean, I want to look and say, Hey, listen, you know what? Uh, I, I got 400 rejections, uh, in a month, in a month, right? I right. have 400 people that told me no in a month. That's a pretty good track record. Why not? <laughs> why not hang it up there? Well, uh, you know, I've committed, I've, I've put it out there. I've committed. A lot of people are, have seen this. A lot of people are watching now. So I really have a commitment and it's really for my benefit. My business life uh, will improve. So far I've made $1,200 that I can trace to this project. A lot of, uh, some of that is recurring. So it's something that's going to come around every month for uh, hopefully lots of months. Uh, so it's doing nothing but improving my business and improving my, uh, maybe my personality too. Who knows? Let's talk about that a little bit because I'm trying to get a sense of the overflow here. You know, we, when we think about fear of rejection, I, I lump this into the category of comfort addiction, right? Well, this is, again, a, a topic that I discuss a lot. I wrote a book on comfort addictions. When we think about that comfort addiction, do, do you think that you'll find other 
pockets in your life where you look and you go, hey, I, I did this. I, 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 I went for a thousand no's. I did it. These were the positive results. And by the way, I didn't die or nothing. Uh, do you think you'll be able to identify other areas of your life where you're going to be able to take that newfound uh, wisdom and courage? Oh, huh, good question. I, I really hadn't thought of that. Uh, there aren't too many other areas where fear rules me in my life, luckily. Um, but you know, I, I've said from the beginning, I don't know how I'm, what the situation in my business is going to be at the end of a thousand no's, but I know I'll be a changed person because of it, hopefully for the positive. How do you develop the type of thick skin that you would need to hear no that often? I, I, I look at it as a game. Uh, you know, I've just sort of incorporated, I told you the, that was easy. you know, so even though I'm the only one hearing that, when I get a no, it, you know, it makes me chuckle. It keeps me positive. Now I have a long-term goal here that helps. You know, I've got this thousand to get to. People are watching. It's fun. I have a lot of great stories now. I had uh, I saw a meme on Facebook a couple of weeks ago that said, "No guts, no story." So now I have uh, you know several interesting stories. I ha I'll have a lot more, I think, uh, by the end. Uh, yeah, I would I would think so. Um, and you could really just you know sort of look at it as not just a, a task or an interesting project, but actually a movement if we can encourage more people to embrace uh, what that rejection might look like and what the benefits are uh, that, that are on the other side. And that's why you know, I'll be interested to follow the story just to kind of see, well, where does this go? And ultimately, you know, what, what does it lead to? But even if it didn't lead to any more business, even if it didn't lead to any, any revenue return, would it still be worth it? Oh, absolutely. Uh, absolutely. It's, you know, eventually it will. I mean, there's lots of stories out there of people who have done things like this. And I've yet to find a story of somebody who took on a legitimate, uh, rejection challenge and didn't have something very good happen in their lives. So Love I don't want to be yeah. the first, I don't want to disappoint anybody. <laughs> All right. There you have it. Uh, his name is Leo Quinn. If you want to follow him, you can go to adventures in rejection dot com adventures and rejection dot com and follow his journey he's got a score sheet a score tally that's updated uh, on the website so you'll be able to see uh, how he's doing and uh, how close uh, uh, he is getting and i just want to just say i i apologize uh leo for for saying yes i i'm i'm really really sorry about that <laughs> i'll come up with something you can reject me for <laughs> appreciate you being on the buyer's mind thank you jeff it's been great all right, Murph. Well, that, that was, it's interesting, isn't it? I mean, a summer of a thousand no's. How, how would you do in that uh, exercise, Murph? How would you do? I, you know, the, the rate of return on that seems really frustrating to me. I, I, and I don't even live in that world. So mm -hmm. it, it becomes this question that I want to ask you. Of, you know, he got 30 yeses out of almost 400 no's, not even quite 10%. Um, so when you're looking at that kind of rate of return where you're like, okay, I put over 90% of no's, but you're getting such a few amount of yes. What, why, why would you continue down that path? It, it feels useless. Yeah. Um, well, listen, first of all, the more, more of a big deal you make about the no's, the more you let them eat at you, uh, the, the harder that that is going to be right. Because then it gets in between your ears and you know, I th one of the things that I know is that we have this sense of our need to fit in. And it's been described to me going all the way back to days where we lived in tribes and to be kicked out of the tribe was to lose your life. So our fear of rejection is very, very primal. So if we let it get inside of us, we let it get inside of our head, uh, it's really going to do a number. And then we're just going to want to avoid any possibility of a rejection and of course, that's really dangerous because it's le going to lead us down a road that we just don't want to go on. It'll it'll prevent us from really doing anything that could yield us the positive results. But more to your point, Merv, I think that if we really focus in on the value of one yes versus the potential pain of 10 no's, it puts everything in perspective. Let me put that another way. How successful do you want to be, right? Because if you want to look and say, I'm only going to wait for the easy sales to come my way. Okay, good. 
I, I hope you don't mind having skinny children because that's not the way that successful people put food on the plate. They look at it and they're going to say, you know what? I heard no 10 times in a row here, but you know what? I'm not bleeding. Nobody hit me. Nobody called the cops. But I heard yes one time and I'm going to celebrate that yes. I'm going to feast on it. I'm going to let it carry me through the next 10 no's. So I think that that's where the balance comes into play. You make a very little deal about the no, you make a very big deal about the yes, and you recognize that if you don't get rejection, then it literally means you are waiting for people to come to you and ask permission to buy your product. And if that's the type of salesperson you are, good luck with that. It'll be a short-lived career. Did that make sense, Murph? It does, but let me ask you this, because Leo sounds like he's coming from a cold call sales world. Um, and so how, how many of our audience or what percentage of our audience do you think lives in that cold call world uh, and has to deal with it on that level? Yeah, well, it's a good question, a fair question. But here's the thing. I don't think it has to be a cold call. So let's suppose that, it, that I'm selling marketing services and my specialty industry is restaurants and more particularly uh, uh, pizza shops, okay? So now what I'm going to do, if I can go out of my way to just do a quick little bit of research to figure out who, wh what is this pizza shop, who owns it, what does their online presence look like right now, what does Yelp have to say, what does TripAdvisor have to say, what does OpenTable have to say, uh, uh, what, what do I know even from the records as to how long this place has been around, what their specialty is, if I can learn things uh, about the organization and specifically about the owner slash decision maker, then I don't think it's as cold as we think it is. It's not a matter of randomly picking up the phone and dialing it and hoping somebody on the other end has a need for my services. It's a matter of doing a little research so that you can warm it up, if you will, before you make the call. And if you do that, you'll have a personal point of connection and, and that's going to make it so much, so much easier. You know, and if you're looking at it right now and you're still skeptical, I recommend go back just a couple of months ago and listen to the podcast episode with Aaron Gargan King. Uh, just a really, really strong premise there that the screen is the new gatekeeper. You, you got to get through the screen. There's stuff in the screen that will help you get to the decision makers. But if you're not even looking at the screen and learning who these people are, you're, you're never going to get through. So what other advice would you have for people in our audience uh, in terms of asking those questions that you already talk about all the time, uh, but getting to know your customer, digging deeper, asking the three whys deep or, or whatever it is, how do you do that in such a, a, a style of sales? Well, you know, the first thing I would recommend, gee, this is going to sound serving, pick up a copy of Be Bold and Win the Sale. That book is all about comfort addictions in the sales process. And I go through a, uh, what I do in that book is I take the principles of something called cognitive behavioral therapy, which is the number one therapy used to treat people with addictions of any kind. So if you have a comfort addiction, if I'm addicted to my desire for comfort and it's keeping me from doing the things that I really know that I should do, why not use that therapy? And so the key to cognitive uh, behavioral therapy is to plan in advance for your discomfort. You see, the time to plan for your discomfort is not when I've got a phone in my hand and a phone number in front of me. No, no, no. If that's how you're feeling, if that makes you uncomfortable just dialing the phone and asking for the business and you're waiting to decide what you're going to do until it's time to make the call, the emotional side of you is going to say, don't do it. Run away. Go in the other direction. You can still save yourself. But if I decide in advance before I get to that discomfort that this is how I'll respond when I'm uncomfortable, that's the game changer. That's where everything changes because now I can make the decision of how I'm going to respond out of the logical side of my brain. I can look at it and I can decide how I'm going to respond. I can decide my attitude. I can decide how I am going to conquer fear before the fear shows up. So it's not how to deal with rejection. It's when to deal with rejection. And the when is not after we get it. The when is before we get it. And if we do that, it's a 
total game changer, we end up seeing everything uh, quite a bit different. So I, I just want to suggest uh, uh, to all of you who are listening right now, uh, you know, it's an old quote, but it's such a good quote from Wayne Gretzky. You miss 100% of the shots that you don't take. And here's Leo Quinn going to make a thousand attempts at uh, rejection here over the course of the of the summer. And that gives him a thousand opportunities uh, to be able to hear a yes. And you know what? He's not going to die. Nobody's going to sw- take a swing at him. Nobody's going to uh, uh, insult his family. Nobody's going to call the authorities. No, the worst case scenario is no, I'm not interested. And if you can't handle a simple no, I'm not interested, you probably need to find another work. But if you can, then let your no be a ticket on the way to the yes. So you need to go out there and stand apart from everybody else who is too much of a comfort addict to want to be able to do the things that you need to do. Embrace the no, and you might just change your world. Embrace the no.